friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and today is um, the day I'm kind of looking through the pantry and making my list for my upcoming Azure Standard order. Every month I place an order for all of our bulk dried goods and so I sit down right before the, the order is due and I kind of go through and I evaluate what I'm low on and what I think I may run out of in the next month or couple of months and I add that to my list to order. And in doing so, it reminded me of a question I've been getting quite frequently lately. Um, in the news, there's lots of talk of supply chain disruptions and food shortages, and people are talking about prepping and things like that more than ever. And so a common question I've been getting is, is that news or that fear of upcoming food shortages and things like that changing the way I do my pantry ordering or changing the way we're preparing or, um, things like that. And so I guess I wanted to address that in this video. I wanted to talk to you about the difference between homesteading and prepping and kind of where our family falls on that spectrum. And um, in toward the end of this video, I want to give you some kind of practical advice on how I would um, advise you to prepare for what the news is saying could happen in the next couple of months. So if that's something that interests you, why don't you stick around and we'll talk a little bit about it. Okay, so let's just dive right in to what I believe are the differences between homesteading and prepping. I believe that all homesteaders by nature are preppers just because of what we're doing here in, in terms of trying to be more self-sufficient and grow our own food and things like that. But all preppers aren't necessarily homesteaders. You know, There are people that live in the middle of the city and they're not able to grow their own food but they're still very concerned with self-sufficiency and the idea of preparing for potential issues that could arise and so they may stockpile food in certain ways and have a dedicated room in their house for um, food storage and supply storage and things like that and so um, where we kind of fall on that spectrum I guess it's different for Adam and I. I've addressed this in, in videos before that I would say Adam is more of the prepper mindset, whereas I'm definitely more of a homesteader mindset. What drew us to this lifestyle that we're currently living um, are kind of was determined by those mindsets that we have. For Adam, the idea of moving out to the country and being able to raise our own food and heat our home with wood and have a well with a, a hand pump that we can draw water from even without electricity, all of that was tied to, for him, being prepared for potential scenarios that could arise. The growing of the food was just sort of a bonus for him because Adam, in his prepper mindset, would be just as content stockpiling things like MREs <laughs> somewhere in a long-term food storage area and living off that if he had to. Whereas for me, the idea of homesteading was the food really matters to me and I want good quality food for, for my family. I want to grow it in a way that, that matters to me, that is ethical, that is um, good for the environment and sustainable. And so I guess our reasons for what we're doing now were very different, but we both have the same goal. We both want to be as prepared as possible. We both want to um, take care of our family in the way God has called us to. I guess we just as the father of the family and the mother of the family kind of approach it very differently. So as a homesteader, every year I'm naturally preparing for the season where I'm not going to be able to grow food. So spring, summer, fall, all of that is preparing for winter when here in Ohio nothing really grows um, other than the few eggs we may get from our chickens and then obviously the meat that is abundant that we can either hunt or um, grow on the property but in terms of fruits and vegetables and grains and things like that there's not much that we can grow in the winter here in Ohio so my whole purpose I guess in growing this food throughout the whole growing season is to prepare for that time when we aren't able to grow it. And so what I do every year is I grow as much as possible and obviously I try to preserve as much as possible to get us through those months when I can't have fresh produce available or tons of fresh eggs or whatever it is that I want to eat. And um, so naturally, that's how I view it as a homesteader. So to answer the question, am I doing anything different this year? Not really. Every year I'm preparing for the potential time when there will be a shortage of food. And um, as a homesteader, I'm not relying as much on store-bought food. I'm trying to grow as much food as possible here. And so supply chain issues 
my whole goal in homesteading is to not have to rely on the supply chain as much. In my food storage situations, I have two categories. I have my short-term food storage, which is what I just described to you. It's the stuff that I prepare all year and preserve it to just to get us through that short-term period of the winter where things aren't growing. And then I do do some long-term um, food storage. I set some stuff uh, away. I have some bulk dry goods that are sealed away. And that's more for long-term things. Um, if I weren't able to access things like grains or we had a year where um, all of our chickens died of some kind of disease and we couldn't access protein or whatever, it's just smart to have you know, some beans and other protein sources that are packed away, you know, for a rainy day, just in case. But the majority, I would say 90% of my food storage is short-term food storage. I store this stuff up with the goal to use it up every year. Um, if you followed me for very long, either here or on Instagram, you know that every year I do a pantry challenge, usually through the months of January and February, sometimes through parts of December, where I don't go to the grocery store at all because my goal during that time is not just to save money by not going to the grocery store, but to use up everything that I've worked so hard to preserve over the year um, because I don't want to hoard this stuff. I grow it to use it and then to... Um, the next year we'll just replenish it by growing it again and so looking at the future and what the news is saying could happen doesn't change any of that I'm still going to do it I've preserved enough for the winter and once we eat all of this it will be the growing season again and I can plant more food for the next year Lord willing and so when I think of prepping and long-term food storage like I said, that's a very small portion of what I focus my energy on because my long-term food preps are in my backyard, basically. Um, I know that if I have lots of roosters and hens out there, I can potentially incubate future batches of chicks and grow more protein and more eggs um, that way. And so that is my long-term food storage is all of that poultry that's sitting in my backyard and the beef that I'm growing in my yard and the bees that are out there and my seed storage. I focus a lot on making sure that at the end of every growing season we've set aside enough seeds so that if, like we saw in 2020, seeds are hard to come by, I will be able to grow the crops that I want in the coming year. So I guess Knowing that there could be shortages in the stores in the coming months doesn't change any of that for me. I'm still going to be doing what I'm always doing because, once again, I'm a homesteader. This is what I do every year. I want to grow food, and every year I want to become less and less dependent on the store for those things. Another little practical tip I would like to give you um, if you're thinking and really concerned about future supply chain shortages would be to address lifestyle changes versus just hoarding certain items things that you can change in your environment and the way you do things to make it more sustainable for the future. So for example, you know, if you have a child who's in diapers and there's this fear that, oh my goodness, what if two months from now diaper prices skyrocket or all of a sudden there aren't any diapers on the shelves? Well, the solution to that might not necessarily be buying 10,000 boxes of diapers and keeping them in your house. Maybe the solution to that is um, looking into cloth diapering and having a sustainable diapering option available to you um, so that you never worry about running out. Um, same with other things. You know, everybody, the toilet paper was the thing in 2020, right? And I've already heard talk again about people hoarding toilet paper because they're worried there's going to be a shortage here in the coming months. And it's like, well, maybe the solution isn't hoarding and having an entire closet in your house full of toilet paper. Maybe you look at options like putting a bidet, a bidet on your toilet or something like that that would decrease your need for as much toilet paper. And so when I think about making changes to my life based on what I see in the news and thinking, okay, there could be shortages in certain areas, you know, for me, the more, the, the wiser approach instead of just hoarding things would be to actually look at how I can become less dependent on those things in the first place. And so, I mean, I guess that's one area I've been I've been doing that through my whole homesteading journey and looking into the future that's something I want to continue to do is just become less and less dependent on these systems that are so shaky and um, that could potentially cause disruptions in my life I just want to be with my family raise my family 
bring glory to the Lord. I don't want to have to worry about running out of toilet paper and scrambling and running to 10 stores to find what I need. So the less dependent on that I am, the happier everybody is around here. And so all of that leads me to, I guess, my final point in this big long ramble, um, which is that we should never prepare for anything out of fear. Um, we should do it out of wisdom. And so there are, I feel like there are plenty of examples in the Bible where God called people to prepare for various things. You know, we could talk about Noah preparing for the flood or Joseph preparing for the seven years of famine. There are lots of examples. Even Jesus called his own apostles to prepare for the coming um, destruction of the temple and things like that. And so preparing in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't show a lack of faith. It can show... Um, having a lot of wisdom if it's coming from the spirit and a spirit led and the way that you're going to know your preps your preparing is spirit led versus fear led is if it's giving you anxiety if you're feeling anxious about the future and you can't sleep at night and you're hoarding things and you're you know that that isn't coming from a place of wisdom in the spirit I feel like if um, God would never produce that anxiety in you. And so I guess that's my final <laughs> bit of, um, I guess, practical tips that I would give you is to really evaluate if you turn on the news and what you see is producing anxiety in you and you're feeling like this, I need to prepare, I need to prepare, that isn't coming from God. That's coming from a place that um, that isn't good. And so just take a step back, pray about it, and God will show you the ways that you need to prepare for your family and the connections you need to make. Um, and ultimately, the goal is to be a blessing to others. You know, I look at Adam and I, and I guess my final answer to the question that prompted this video, are we changing the way that we're preparing in any ways due to what we see on the news? And if anything, I feel like, the news makes me want to be more prepared so that I can be a blessing to others because I really feel like as a homesteader, my family is very well taken care of. We've spent the last decade of our lives building to this point so that we can be prepared for emergencies. And so if anything, looking at the news makes me want to be a blessing for the people that haven't um, had the privilege or the opportunity for whatever reason to prepare in this way. And so if I can set back a little extra and help someone else out if food prices skyrocket or whatever, I think that is the wisest thing to do right now. So. All right, so hopefully that answers the question and I'm gonna get back to making my Azure Standard list and I will share what we ordered here coming up in the next video. I guess I kinda wanna make this a series talking about being prepared. And the next video I wanna make in this series is gonna talk about what I would um, advise you to have in a well-stocked pantry that can get you through short-term food storage and then also long-term food storage. And so um, hopefully I can uh, film that here in the coming weeks. But in the meantime, I'm going to get back to doing my normal monthly preparations and um, get back into taking care of my homestead and my family here. And I just want to... Um, Thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for all of the kind messages in my um, last video where I explained, you know, what had been going on with us for the last couple months, and I wasn't able to respond to all of you, um, but I, I read every single message, and I, I just truly appreciate it. Thank you so much, and we're getting back into the swing of things here, obviously. We're, <laughs> we're doing life here and getting better every day, so just thank you, and if you keep us in, our prayer, in your prayers, we would appreciate it. All right, friends, I will talk to you next week. Until then.